Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, today we are gonna winterize the boat that I just bought this fall. So it's got an Evinrude E-Tech 2008, 2009, 50 horse. And a bunch of stuff on the inside of the boat that I haven't even touched yet, gas tank, all the stuff I gotta take out and winterize for this winter. So I'm gonna do the, the hard thing first, which is winterize the motor, which I have not done before on this type of motor before, but they're pretty much all the same. So first thing I'm gonna do is get basically water run to this so I can put the muffs on and get this thing up to running and operating temp, let it run. And then because it's an Evinrude slash it's a two stroke and it has oil on the inside, this has its own fogging procedure. So I'm, it's basically gonna fog the motor I'm gonna do all that, get the, the bottom end basically warmed up, take the, sh the prop off first before I do any of this stuff. Take the prop off, get it all warmed up, have it auto fog, and then I'm gonna spend the time and I'm gonna grease all of the fittings that need to be greased on here for the winter time. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through the boat, take everything I can out of the boat. So I'm gonna unplug Unplug everything, take all the batteries out, take the fire extinguisher. I might leave that in there, it's not gonna hurt anything. Um, take anything, but I, what I mean everything, I mean everything that a mouse can chew. And I'm also gonna put bounce dryer sheets in the boat. That's supposed to keep the mouse mice out. It kept it out of my last boat. That was like one of the most common questions, like why are you using dryer sheets? Dryer sheets are to keep the mice out. This motor had mouse damage in it. This has mice damage in it, that had mice damage in it. There's like, you know, bulkhead foam in there to prevent the boat from sinking. Uh, so I'm gonna pop these off and I need to do some rewiring in here in the spring. So I'm just gonna leave the screws out, put them in a plastic baggie. Same with on that side, I need to take off my hummingbird mount for my ice fishing season that I just put in there. And I'm gonna take all the seats out and leave them in my basement and then dryer sheet, put the stays on, put the cover on and tarp it and then bring it down to the, another part of my property so it's not taking up all of my driveway. So that is the plan for this video. So I'm gonna specify it really for the Evan Road, but then kind of structure it towards like aluminum boats in general. So let's take the prop off first. And just because I don't, I don't wanna bend over. Let's tip that up, bend that cotter, bend the cotter pin over and take that nut off. All right, there goes the cotter pin and I'm gonna see if I have something to take that off with big enough, which I do. So hopefully you guys can see that and what they normally suggest is kind of first, make sure that your threads are lefty, loosey, righty, tighty. And you can do that by seeing which way the threads, the threads go. So the threads are going that way. That's lefty, loosey, righty, tighty. And what they say to do, when in doubt, grab a bigger piece of wood. Back it right up against that. And it shouldn't be like super tight. There is a spec in the manual for like a hundred something. I won't say give you guys the exact number because I'm not gonna do it right now. But I'm gonna take that off. Put that where I don't lose it. And then take that off. And there was actually grease in there, which is always good. So I am gonna stabilize the gas first. I have a uh, six gallon gas tank in there um, in the boat. So I'm gonna stabilize that because I really have no use for it really anywhere else. Um, so I'm gonna use, you know, I'm using this. This is what they recommended at the store. Uh, so one ounce per every 10 gallons. So I'm gonna use like very, very little of this. And just a little bit, not gonna hurt anything. 
and we're just going to shake that about that will stabilize the fuel in the fuel lines and everything else but i'm going to take the gas can out anyways um that's it got that all stirred up put this here and then for anything like me like i always work alone buy one of these like little on off switches it'll save you well, one from probably getting wet and then i'll save you some time going and turn off the water and on and off and stuff like that so we're going to let this warm up that's going to warm up the bottom end oil number one um, so it's easier to drain and replace that with the lower end unit oil so we got our muffs on the, the water's on slow right now mainly because it drains into my yard or into my garage and uh per Evernode, depending on your controller um advance the grip throttle halfway so we're going to do that right now so that's all the way off that's all the way on advance the grip throttle halfway start the upward upward runs at slow idle speed after upward runs for 15 seconds move throttle grip to idle position so we're just going to let it run first a normal cycle let that run for a couple of minutes and then we'll go over to this we'll shut it off and go into this new cycle say that's halfway now I'm gonna run it 15 seconds go got it to work finally winterized it i'll show you guys the actual halfway throttle position so mine's kind of worn off so it's hard to really see that but that's it so we got it winterized let's go shut the water off and re-grease all of the uh, fittings so all that did was dump extra oil from the oil reservoir it's gonna you know it's a normal mixture or whatever the ratio is all it did is it just sprayed that into the two cylinders so cylinder one and two uh there's only two in this only two in this one dump that in there that prevents um, rust from happening because two strokes are kind of open-ish so we're going to leave this in this upright position for a while or vertical position not upright and we're going to go get the grease gun I grease all of the fittings and I'll look in the manual, make sure I don't miss any. But I'm seeing one, two, three there. Um, I'm sure there's usually a couple more that are hidden. And I'll, you know, I'll lift the, lift the motor up and, and check all that, but let's do that right now. So I'm using uh using mercury high performance extreme grease this should do everything um everything that i need to do in the trailer so the bearings and all of the fittings on here it should every should do should do everything all at once so i don't have to buy different types of tubes so we're gonna do the two down here one here and i don't really care what grease was in there before i'm gonna stay with this grease because it seems to be you know mercury's kind of readily available and 
And there's a couple reasons I'm doing this. One, to grease it, and two, to push out any water that's been in there all summer so it doesn't freeze in there. And for those of you, I don't know, hopefully you guys can see that. See all the way in there. The end of these grease guns have adjustable grip on them. I did not know that before. Learn from my last mistake where I snap one off. This is what we want to see here. See that grease coming out the bottom there? How it's all like milky and different color. That could be just because it was different uh, color grease. This one is green, as you can see from color. So we want to see green coming out of that that bottom area there. Hopefully you guys can see that. There we go. There's the color. All right, we've got that nice amount of grease in there, and I wipe off any extra. Last thing you want to see is uh, one of your buddies. have grease all over themselves or in on their hands or whatever and touch everything in your boat or get it in your carpet. So I just tilted the shifter knob, knob up yeah, and that one took a very little shot, which is fine. Right under there. There we go. I'm guessing that one's never been greased before since Took some pressure to get it out. And we're gonna get this one and then there's one on the other side. And like I said before, we want that to change into my color. And grease is cheap compared to something that's rusted shut, so. Or broken because of uh, got water in it and froze. So it moves a lot easier than it did before. So it definitely needed some grease. And we're gonna put the prop back on. It has plenty of grease on it already. And you can put them on backwards, but you don't wanna do that. That goes on, actually. <clears throat> that goes on first. I can double check that by looking at the manual. Yep, then 120. So for this particular engine, 120 to 144 inch pounds. So that goes on. This goes on. Castle nut. I'm gonna go get my torque wrench, put that on. So not a whole lot of pressure there, but um, we need to be at that 120 to 140 inch pounds, but we need to go a little bit more. So I'm at the low end. I want to start at the low end and then go up so I can get the cotter pin in all the way. A little bit more. All right, there's that. Well, I forgot a whole step. We have to drain the lower end unit oil, which is always fun. And in this case, two Allen wrenches. Loosen the top one first, then the bottom one, that way it'll all drain out. And what we don't want to see is any sort of milky substance coming out of there, anything besides just straight oil. And I'm just gonna use this as a leverage point. That actually looks really good. And this happens to be a magnetic plug, so there is a little bit of metal on there, but not nothing to really worry about. So that's gonna take a very long time to, uh, to drain all the way out. Some other things. So what we don't wanna see is any sort of like cloudy, milky, any sort of color like that in there. That means there's water in there, which means either the seal's bad here or the or the plugs that I'm cleaning right now are dirty. So while that's doing that, let's do 
let's do some easy stuff in the boat, like take some of my fishing stuff out. These are bounce dryer sheets and I can't even stand the smell of these things. So I'm gonna put a couple in the motor cowling because actually, you know what? Let me show you guys the, the damage these little buggers did inside the motor cowling on this thing. All of that, that's fur, it might've been a chipmunk or a squirrel or I'm guessing a mouse. All of that damage in there is all mouse related. They chewed wires in there. They destroy things, that's what they do, unfortunately. So I'm gonna put a couple in there where I know they've been before. And I will know to take these out in the spring because I'm gonna put them in there. Not toxic, they smell so bad that mice don't actually want to eat them and stuff. So they won't make a nest out of it. Or that's my, uh, what I've found so far. <clears throat> now for the fun part, taking everything out, like these rods that I won't need for a little while. Take this out. I want to take all the seats out. I want to take all the paperwork out. Nope, but what I am gonna do is I'm gonna line this with dryer sheets as well. So hopefully you can see me, but while that's still draining, I'm gonna pop all the screws out of this panel and pop all the screws out of that panel. Uh, and I'll show you what the mice have done with the previous owner. If you have like a new aluminum boat, even like the tracker boats, which I found, the screws will be hidden in the carpet and you won't be able to see them. Just kind of like poke around and you'll hear like a dink and that's where the screw is. Um, go slow, otherwise you'll strip them out because they're stainless steel. Really wanted to show you guys what the mice have done in here. So this is all chewed mice stuff, this mouse crap in there. I did vacuum it out and it kind of like just rattles loose again. So this little channel, um, all of that is like mouse chew. So they get in there and they destroy things. Uh, they love wiring for some reason. So we're gonna put this wiring, tuck it all up nice, and then um, put bounce sheets in there and close it back up. And this might be overkill. Um, and I regularly trap all the mice on my property because I hate them. So might be overkill for you guys. If you have it in, an, in a nice heated garage, which I don't, um, you might not have to worry as much, but I get to worry a bunch. So we're gonna go do the other side. Same thing, dryer sheets, unscrew the pieces. All right, I think it's finally done. It's dripping. And then we're gonna use Evan, uh, Evan Rue Johnson HPF Pro um, fluid, basically. And we need to use, I think, 22 ounces of this stuff. And we're gonna pump it up from the, from the bottom to go to the top with one of these hand pumps. And I'll leave all the links to all this stuff below. Um, <clears throat> your boat may vary, of course. And for this particular one, I need to cut the uh, bottom of the straw off. And the guy told me to told me to do that, which is very nice of him because I wouldn't have instantly got that. We got it eventually, but all right. So we're just going to pump this until uh, it comes out that hole. We're gonna pump this up there, nice and slow, until it comes out the top, and then we're gonna put the screw in the top. That's gonna basically do an airlock, and that way we can unscrew this still quickly, and then put the bottom screw in. I'll take most of the bottle. Quick tip, do not store this stuff out in the cold. It will turn into straight peanut butter. Uh, store it inside. Keep it in a safe place away from kids. There we go. <clears throat> All right, there's that. And then 
I like to do like a half squirt in there. And that way when I start taking it out, I have that brief opportunity to get the plug in there without losing too much oil. Not a lot comes out anyways, because it is like, it is a sealed unit basically. There's no, I don't think there's any breather for it. Then this comes with a little cap. Store that in the garage somewhere. Buy some more in the spring. So, so I'm gonna wipe this all off. Remove my oil pan somewhere where I won't trip on it. So one more thing guys, to winterize your uh, boat. I have stainless steel bearing buddies on mine. Uh, Cause I, you know, take it in the ocean or this boat goes in the ocean. The way to properly do this is to not mix two different types of grease. So I don't know what grease is in there. I actually put some on the outside so this stops rusting. That's why you see the stuff on the outside. So you don't want to mix two types of grease. So what I'm going to do in the spring, and I'm not going to do it now, is take off the bearing buddy, take off the whole hub basically, get out all of that old grease and put in and repack the bearings and put in my own grease. I'm not going to show you guys that in the video. You guys can look that up online uh, or look it up on YouTube and you can show how to repack bearings. But what they do say to do is make sure you when you do push it in there, don't over, don't put too much grease in there. So this little, this little metal ring here in the bottom, basically like the little metal seal doesn't touch that. Otherwise you'll blow out your back uh, seal and that way everything will go bad. So you don't want to do that. So I'm going to do that in the spring. I might make a video on how to do it, but um, there's plenty of videos online how to do this. So just grease it up just enough so you can move this just a little bit, but you want to be able to, to have it move back and forth. So that's it guys. I've obviously made a gigantic mess everywhere, but I'm gonna put the cover back on, turn my truck around, put the cover on, um, and then tarp this with a, with a big tarp, a big blue green tarp basically. That'll cover everything, give everything the moisture out and bring this down to the lower part of my property so it's not taking up my whole driveway. And then in the spring, I'll, uh, like I said, I'll replace all that or, you know, replace the strap and probably the ratchet because it's all, all shot actually, probably be easier to do. Grease the ball and stuff like that, probably replace the chains, double check the wiring, replace that. So that's it for uh, winterizing your aluminum boat with a Evinrude 40, 50 and 60 horse. They're all the same, kind of like Mercury does or I think they just changed the uh, injection module and that changes the horsepower. Um, which is kind of funky, but I guess that's do what they got to do to get their money out of it, I guess. So that's it. I'm going to basically take that battery out uh, as a last thing, but I needed to, to transport it over there. And then I need to store the motor in its vertical position. That'll make sure there's no moisture or any water that re retains in there because it's supposed to auto drain in the vertical position. I would take the gas tank out if I had a place to store it, but I don't. So it's just going to stay in there. So that's it. If you guys have any questions, uh, let me know below. I'm really good at doing research. And just a disclaimer, I'm following the manual. So if I read something wrong, it's my fault. And uh, so don't, you know, make sure you read your manual or download your manual or Google your manual or buy a manual or a service manual. Super helpful. You'll learn a bunch more about motors and how things work if you get one of those service manuals. So make sure you guys subscribe, hit the bell notification and, uh, be ready for this thing to come out in the spring.